How's it going, everybody? It's Yeong here, and welcome to a Death Stranding news update. The following information comes directly from Hideo Kojima's Twitter, as well as a video interview from IGN, where they got to visit Kojima Productions, both of which showcase a first look at the interior of Kojima's new studio. But the one thing that I want to focus on in this video is this wall that resides within Kojima Productions, which was constantly displayed in both Kojima's photos and IGN's video. It looks to be some kind of mural that not only displays some of Kojima's key partners, but also provides some hints regarding Death Stranding, particularly through the scribbles, which showcase some equations, a bunch of text, and even a rough piece of art. Now, I do hope to talk about all of these elements eventually, but for the sake of keeping things simple and organized, in this video, I'll just be focusing on the equations, which by themselves encompass a vast topic. These are physics equations, after all, which can be pretty daunting to wrap your head around if you're not versed in the world of physics. Fortunately for me, I just so happen to have an older brother who majored in physics and is on his way to getting his doctorate. Wikipedia wasn't helping in my understanding at all, so I decided to consult my brother for this video. And the two of us sat down, looked at all these equations, and found the simplest way to explain all of them. Even I learned a thing or two from this endeavor, so a huge shout out to my brother, Inbach. Before we dive into these equations, there are a few terms that I would like for you to keep in mind. Throughout this video, you may find yourself hearing words such as classical, quantum, and relativity from time to time. All you have to know about these terms is that classical is often associated with your normal, everyday objects, so basically anything you can see around you. The term quantum is associated with particles and waves, so things like electrons and other subatomic elements that you can't see with your naked eye. And the term relative or relativity is often associated with concepts like the speed of light and gravity. So, classical equals normal everyday objects, quantum equals particles and waves, and relative equals speed of light and gravity. Just keep that in mind. With that out of the way, I'd like to go through each of these equations one by one and try to explain what they are. Let's start with something simple. This equation towards the bottom here is what's known as Newton's second law of motion. In its simplest form, the formula states that force equals mass times acceleration. You may have come across this one if you've taken any physics classes in high school. It's one of the easier concepts to wrap your head around. The formula basically defines the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. Now, interesting to note about Newton's three laws of motion is that they laid the foundation for something called classical mechanics. There's that word, classical. Based on what I told you before, you can deduce that classical mechanics deals in laws and theories related to normal physical objects. Questions such as, if I drop an object from a certain height, how long will it take to reach the ground? Or, if you throw a ball at a certain angle, how far will it reach? And to use Newton's second law of motion as an example, if I apply a certain amount of force to an object with this much mass, what will the acceleration be? All deal in classical mechanics. On the other hand, our next equation on the top left here deals in what's called quantum mechanics. Keeping in mind what I said before, you'll be able to deduce that this equation is related to particles. This one in particular is called Schrodinger's equation, or more specifically, the time-dependent Schrodinger's equation for a single particle. Before we proceed, something I have to clear up is how classical mechanics differ from quantum mechanics. The reason that there is a distinction between these two is because normal physical objects behave differently from particles. With normal objects, if you know all the conditions of a certain situation or experiment, it's possible to precisely measure all of the object's behaviors. How an object falls, how an object swings, how an object bounces, how an object breaks. All of these things can be defined in a very precise manner because normal physical objects act predictably. That's not the case for particles. The main reason for this is because particles have wave-like properties. As a result, particles are constantly moving, zipping around, and doing all kinds of crazy things, making them much more unpredictable. 
Let me put it this way, if you replicated a classical mechanics experiment exactly the same way down to the most microscopic detail and repeated it over and over and over again, you'd get the exact same results every time, and I mean exact. For example, if you somehow managed to create a contraption that can throw a ball and exactly reproduce the conditions of throwing said ball every time, even with a billion trials, that ball would land at exactly the same point every single time. Again, that's assuming you can exactly replicate every single condition. With particles, on the other hand, or I should say with quantum mechanics experiments, even if you replicated the exact same experiment a billion times, you'd get different results every time. But if you compiled all the results, you'd also see some sort of spectrum. You'd see that it's more probable that a particle will act a certain way. So let's say your quantum experiment involves trying to predict the exact position of a particle under a controlled environment. Similarly to the example classical mechanics ball experiment that I previously detailed. Unlike the ball, which would always travel at exactly the same trajectory and land at exactly the same spot, you'd find that the particle will travel towards and be at a different place every time, no matter how exactly you replicate this quantum experiment. But if you record all the results, you'd also find that the particle is in a certain area more often than others under certain conditions. So the probability of the particle being in a coordinate within that area would be greater than a coordinate where the particle ended up less often after a billion trials. So long story short, when it comes to particles, you wouldn't ask for things like their exact position, speed, acceleration, momentum, or whatever other property you're looking for, like you would with a normal object. Instead, you'd ask for the probability that a particle will be a certain way given certain conditions. And again, this is attributed to the fact that particles have unpredictable wave-like properties. In the simplest terms, classical equals predictable physical objects that yield exact results, and quantum equals unpredictable particles that yield probable results. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Schrodinger's equation. At its simplest, the function of this equation is to tell you how the probability of a particle being a certain way or having a certain property is distributed over space and how it evolves over time. A more tangible way to look at it is that what Newton's second law is to normal objects is what Schrodinger's equation is to particles. Newton's equation can exactly define a physical object's force, mass, or acceleration, while the latter, Schrodinger's equation, will tell you the probability of a particle being a certain way under certain conditions. Newton's measures physical objects, Schrodinger's measures particles. Newton's is classical, Schrodinger's is quantum. I hope I'm making some sense here. Quantum mechanics is a little hard to grasp. That's because you see classical mechanics happening all the time around you. Anytime you interact with any object, anytime objects interact with other objects, that's all classical mechanics at play. But quantum mechanics happens on a microscopic and subatomic level. And since most of us have never seen the world work at such a level, it's hard to really picture any of this. But hopefully my explanation has proved to be simple enough for most of you out there to understand. Anyway, next up we have what my brother described to be the Lagrangian of some form of quantum electrodynamics. This one is the hardest one to explain because Lagrangian is not actually a tangible concept, but more of a mathematical tool developed for physics to more easily calculate and obtain equations of motion for any coordinate system. The Lagrangian is actually something that can be applied to a variety of things based on different physical situations. For example, the Lagrangian of an object falling will be different from the Lagrangian for a pendulum. So yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but at its most basic, my brother described the Lagrangian to be kinetic energy minus potential energy. That's all the Lagrangian of something is. And the simplicity and elegance of this solution is what allows physicists to more easily calculate things like motion through the Lagrangian. It's a very vague concept, and again, more of a physics tool than a concept that you can paint an image to. Moving on, this next one over here is what's called Einstein's field equation of general relativity. There is that word, relativity. As I explained before, any concept with the word relativity will deal in things like the speed of light and gravity. 
so it should come as no surprise that this equation deals in gravity's relationship to space and time, or space-time. What this equation states, according to my brother, is that gravity is the effect of the bending and warping of space-time, and that the bending of space-time is caused by mass. So another way to put it is that the equation states that mass bends space-time and that bending of space-time is what we perceive as gravity. Now what's interesting is that we have already seen this equation in Death Stranding's trailer. At one point in the trailer, it's actually possible to make out an equation on one of Norman's character's dog tags that can't be seen in the high-resolution poster. This is actually the same Einstein's field equation of general relativity shown in this mural, but it's in a different form. The one in the trailer is a compressed version of the one shown in this mural. So what this tells me is that the equations seen in the mural are definitely not random. I guarantee you they have something to do with some of the crazy shit that Kojima has in store for his new game. Last but not least, for equations, we have what's known as Maxwell's equations. This one's relatively simple to understand. Each of these four equations essentially say something different about the behavior of electricity and magnetism, with electromagnetism being a field of science that lies at the foundation for many of our modern tech electronics, everything from our smart devices and computers to household items like light bulbs and microwaves are all possible because of phenomenon like electricity and magnetism and the field of science known as electromagnetism. So if we take all of these equations into account, that's five additional equations on top of the two we found in Death Stranding's poster which featured the Schwarzschild radius and the Dirac equation. You may recall that the Schwarzschild radius is plain and simple, the radius of a black hole. A fun fact about the Schwarzschild radius is that you can actually get this equation by reworking Einstein's field equation of general relativity. So these two equations are in some way linked. As for the Dirac equation, this is mainly used to describe a property of electrons called spin, which ties into principles such as quantum mechanics and the theory of special relativity. It's basically one equation that is entirely dedicated to describing one weird aspect of an electron. A fun fact about the Dirac equation is that when it was first established, it predicted the existence of positrons, the antimatter of electrons, and this eventually culminated in the discovery of antimatter in general. So yeah, all of these equations are a big deal in the world of physics. With all said and done, we have seven physics equations in total and a whole lot of more questions. The main one is, of course, what the hell does this all mean? Another important question to ask is how are all of these equations related? Well, this is physics we're talking about, so everything is somehow connected one way or another. But what I will say is that when I asked my brother about what connections he could make from seeing these six equations, he said that from a fictional storytelling perspective, they might be hinting at sci-fi concepts like advanced space travel, time travel, black holes, multiple worlds and dimensions, etc. Akin to movies like Interstellar, which made use of all of these concepts. He also mentioned a concept that no one in the scientific community really takes seriously, but is used often in sci-fi stories, known as the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which implies that all possible alternate histories and futures are real, with each representing an actual world or universe. It also states that there is an infinite number of universes, and everything that could possibly have happened in our past but did not, has occurred in the past of some other universe or universes. So according to this theory, there is one universe where Kojima is still working at Konami, and where maybe Konami isn't a giant pile of shit, and where the hashtag fuck Konami doesn't exist. A popular concept derived from the many worlds interpretation is the all too famous quantum mechanical theorem and paradox known as Schrodinger's cat which states that with the right setup and conditions, a cat in a box is both in a state of being dead and alive at the same time before the box is opened, with both the alive and dead version of the cat residing in different branches of a universe and being equally real without interacting with one another. So yeah, 
It looks like the deeper we look into Death Stranding, the more likely it seems that Kojima will make use of concepts like time travel and multiple universes as part of his new game's story and gameplay. Obviously, it's too early to say how all of this will come together in the final product, but I do get the feeling that each player's game session will represent another universe and somehow tie into the game's online or multiplayer component, as well as the theme of strands and how we're all connected, even if we're universes apart. It's a lot of crazy shit to think about, so for now, I think this is a good place to leave it at that and give you guys some room to chew and swallow on this food for thought. Once you've gathered your thoughts and theories, be sure to share them with us in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things Death Stranding, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out! <laughs>